So in this chapter, we will learn about uh, widgets. So what are widgets? Widgets are small part of UI that can be displayed on the home screen. So this is like miniature applications and you can have buttons, you can have any, anything you want and you can plug this part of activities inside of your home screen. So the idea is to have a subset of your application that display information without having to launch the application and to have uh, notifications, for instance. So, we have to note that this kind of component inside of Android mix good with broadcast receiver. Okay, so in other words, you, if you have a broadcast receiver, you may want to plug it with a widget in order to be responsive to you have received an SMS or something like that. So, some non-technical <coughs> details. You have a widget, but you may want to configure this widget. This widget is not an activity. So to configure this widget, usually what we do is to provide an application. This application will help to configure the widget and so we may want to, uh, to, uh, to configure this widget by clicking a button, launching an activity which is full screen, setting a set of options, and then dismiss from this activity and the, reflex, the change are reflected on the widget. To install a widget, we have to drag and drop from the application part. You go on application widget, you click on the widget and you drag and drop, okay? A word of guidelines. If your widget is too large, it will occupy the, the main part of your screen. So it will not be a widget, but it will be an application. So you have to keep widgets small, as small as possible. And finally, this is the more important thing, which is you can have multiple instances of one widget at a time. So this means that now, we, if we have an update to do, we have to perform the update on each instance of our widget. So, what is the life cycle of a widget? A widget has four methods, unenabled, undeleted, undisabled, unupdate. So the last method is called for every update. In other words, every time we have an update to do, the unupdate method will be called for each widget. Okay? Unenabled is a method that is called when the widget is installed on the on-screen. Undeleted is called when the widget is removed from the home screen. And undisabled is called when the last widget is removed from the home screen. In other words, here we have a way to detect that the last widget disappeared from the home screen and perform some uh, updates. So in details, the life cycle is like that. We start to install a widget, then we trigger an activity for configuring the widget, as I told earlier since the widget cannot be configured from itself from the, the home screen, we have to trigger an activity. Then once the configuration is done, the widget is installed. So, how we can define a widget? For instance, if you have a game, you may want to have a widget displaying the highest score of your application. To do that, first, as usual, we have to modify the android5.xml and here I define a provider with an intent filter and the most important part is app widget update. So this means that every time that there will be an update that will be triggered, there will be an intent that will be launched and run inside of the intent bus with as action a widget update. Okay? So now if we want to define an update, 
we have to set up the my example app widget provider, okay, and to define the layout inside of XML my example app widget info. So widgets may have a configuration file. For instance, what is the rate of updating the widget? One per, one per second, one per 10 seconds, one per 100 seconds? We have to fix that, and here we can see that I fix to a certain amount of milliseconds the, the refresh rate, and we cannot be less than 10,000 milliseconds for updating. So now, if I want to define the main class of my widget, I have two options. First of all, I can use a broadcast receiver, as we have seen earlier, but we can also use App Widget Provider, which is a built-in provider to have a wrap around the widgets. So here I justify my widget through this class, and so this is an empty body since we have nothing to do with that. Now I, I have to modify my Android manifest to take in account the configure file that I have described earlier. And the activity that I define, is that I will be defined, will be triggered automatically when I install the, the widget on the home screen. So to do that, I have to specify that the main activities that will be triggered will be run through the intent filter, which is a widget configure. And now I can have a look to the core of my configuration activity. Here we can see that I set the view of my widget, then I grab the extra information and I do something with this extra information. So now to instantiate a new widget, I have to create a remote view. In other words, I have to build a view that will be displayed on the home screen. Okay? So to do that, I just create a new remote view and I fix the layout of my widget to be r.layout.myexampleAdWidget custom. Okay? And now if I want to be informed that, uh, not, that the, widget has been, the widget configuration has been done, I just have to do that. Okay, now I have widgets, but I may want to have fancy widgets. And for instance, I may, have, I may want to have rounded square. Okay, so to do that, I just have to define a new shape inside of Android and to fix this new shape as the background of my existing uh, view. So to sum up, widgets are a way to have a quick access uh, to information uh, of your application. It helps to display information in a concise manner without having to launch your application and it mixes well with broadcast receiver and the guideline says that you have to define a widget that is no more than a specific number of cells and the cell is defined as this so to build a friendly widget you have to respect that <laughs>